Okay, so just a very quick video to document some work I'm doing on a friend's uh, Music Man RD50 hybrid amplifier. Uh, this particular one, um, not exactly a new amplifier, it's uh, from the, well, the sign off from the factory was the 20th of April 1981, so marginally older than yours truly. Now, several things that I've noticed working with uh, these amps. Um, this one came to me because it had a really, really bad hum when I when I powered it on, and also very, very, well, it was terrible sounding crossover distortion. Um, I thought it was blocking distortion at first, turns out it was actually crossover distortion. So several things with this particular um, amp that I've done some work with. Firstly, first thing I noticed was there was a burnt out resistor there. I can't remember which particular uh, number it was in the schematic. But that's part of the biasing circuit, I think, and it's a 470 ohm, um, three watt, either two or three watt, and I've replaced it with a with a three watt there, flame proof. Okay. Second thing that I had noticed as well, um, I mean that that replacing that actually eliminated some of the hum, um, because when I first got this, I noticed that this tube here was red plating quite quite badly. Um, so I'm, I, I can't work out, I couldn't quite work out whether it was the tube that I died and taken out the component or vice versa. So a second thing that I'd also found was the component labeled D9 on the schematic, which is a Zener diode here. That is a 30 volt, 1 watt Zener diode. Currently that is, well, I think it's pretty much near, near as damn it open really. Um, it measures only about 60, 60 ohms both ways, which isn't great. So I have a replacement here, and hopefully I'll be able to take that out later and replace it with that. Many people who have actually um, worked on these things and, and noticed crossover distortion, uh, these things are auto-biasing, and it, the, the bias circuit depends on how well-matched driver transistors are. So, like I said, it's a hybrid, so there's two solid-state BJT transistors there. Um, the nearer these are in terms of gain, the, the the less the less problems you're going to get with things like crossover distortion. Um, this one has actually already had uh, changes before. Um, if I zoom in slightly, you can tell that the original one, which is this one here, is a JE1692, whereas the other one has been changed to a 2N6488. Um, there are several of them. There are several uh, BJC NPNs that you can use instead of instead of the, um, that 2N one, but the 2N one seems to be quite popular. Hang on a second, let's move this back, here we go. So yeah, a lot of people actually change those, if, uh, or replace those, if, if, if there are any problems. Um, if, they, if one of them seems to be working, whereas the other one isn't working quite as well, then it may point to other parts of the circuit rather than, rather than um, these failing, because they tend to fail outright. Uh, other basic things to note with this particular amp, the ICs um, come, well, the ICs in this amp by default come socketed. So if there are any weird, if there are any other weirdness that's going on, not necessarily the crossover distortion, but if it is blocking distortion, all that sort of good stuff, gently, gently pull these out from its sockets, clean the pins. One of the things that I do use is this, which is a Jonard burnishing file. Um, although you can replace the sockets, the heat and the and the age of these particular boards mean that sometimes the copper tracers on the PCB on the underside actually do do get damaged and they do come off. Um, so rather than risk that, you can always use the burnishing file and try and clean the sockets and the pins. Um, on a slightly different note, this is a bit of a weird weird one actually. This particular one because somebody's actually modified this and put an effects loop. On here, but as they've as they've tapped, they seem to have tapped it from the uh, the 12x7 ECC83 tube on there. That tube is only used for what's known as the limiter, so the, the overdrive circuit. So it's not used on the clean. The clean is actually uh, all solid state preamp. The clean is just driven by by that op amp over there, which was a bit bizarre. Finally. Given the age of the amp, the other thing to keep an eye out for is obviously leaking capacitors. Um, foolproof, well, not foolproof. The better way to do it is to actually take these each one of these out of circuit, desolder one of the legs, meter them, 
um, use a capacitance meter and see whether there's any loss of capacity. However, visual visual inspection is useful as well. And uh, for this particular one, and it's been reported more than once, if I zoom right in, you might be able to see it better. In fact, over there, actually, it's still not great. But basically, there's actually quite a big bulge here on that. And that's a 2 microfarad, uh, 350 volt axial electrolytic. That'll probably need replacing. I don't know whether or not that bulge is actually causing or uh, indi indicative of the hum or anything like that. Indicative of humming, sorry, or anything like that. When I actually put the capacitance meter on that, um, it did measure with intolerance. But of course, you know, under under high voltage operation, who knows whether or not it's still it's still uh, healthy or not. A couple of other things to check before I finish the video. Um, these slightly lower voltage xenodiodes, I think from memory they're 15 volt ones, but they'll they, they need checking to make sure that your uh, your 15 volt rails are healthy. It doesn't hurt to check these um, standard diodes either, these rectifier ones. Okay. Now, uh, hopefully, just waiting for parts now to arrive from uh, CPC Farnell that I've got them from, and uh, let's um, change out that cap and change out that Xena and uh, hope for good news.